Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. I was kind of working on the quadcopter circuit and I actually plugged it in for the first time and something went horribly wrong. Actually it wasn't that bad. Something was shorted because the fuse was red hot and then I fried the, the little diode I put in, in series with that and uh, I'm just going to show you guys what I did to troubleshoot that problem and hopefully after I could try to connect to the board with the programming interface. So let's check that out. Okay, so you could probably see these two little wires that I put on the board and that's because of what I found out from this troubleshooting experience. And it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Something was shorted out. Something was connecting power to ground and uh, that's exactly actually what was happening. So how I found out where the short occurred, I just took out my multimeter on the ohms range when the circuit was disconnected and I started uh, probing around. So you know first things first you go to uh, VCC and ground and there's nothing here but then I move on to the VDD side that my uh, digital supply for the the Atmega chip I kind of just scoped it there and <gasps> there was a short but it's not like a dead short it's like it, it shows like uh, 3.8 ohms 3.8 ohms so that's okay that's that's what you've got from from that point and then uh, you kind of probe some VDD and grounds just around you know maybe on on this op amp chip I have here oh 3.3.7 so that's a little lower than 3.8 right and I scope it maybe at the programming interface Oh, 3.6 again. Somewhere else, 3.6. And then right on the chip, you look at it and it's, oh, 3.5. So it's like, it's kind of like you're localizing the problem. I started far away from the, the Atmega chip and it's reading 3.8 ohms as a short. And then as I get closer, it gets lower and lower impedance. Doesn't that make sense though? Because when you're shorting something, you've got a low impedance and uh, ideally it's zero but I'm, I'm scoping it here and it's showing 3.5 ohms so that's the lowest I've seen it so I, I'm guessing it's the Atmega chip so I desolder it I don't have the proper desoldering tools so I, I just added a whole lot of solder and just went back and forth and back and forth on this uh, Atmega chip and finally I could take it off and when I did I scoped the VDD and ground again and now it's open oh perfect so that that fixed it I took off the chip and that fixed it but it's kind of a bummer because then it means something's not hooked up right in my Eagle uh, files my PCB layout is not correct so I have to do a bit of research I, uh, I, I initially thought it was just my soldering so I, I soldered on a different chip uh, th like the same at mega chip but I soldered it on and uh, I scoped again and sure enough it's back and so now I'm getting a little pissed off because uh, I don't want it to be my layout I love my board layout and I don't want it to be wrong but I check the data sheet and I accidentally swapped VDD and ground on one of the VDD ground pairs so there you go what I had to do is I had to pop off the chip off again and I don't have the proper desoldering tool, so that's a pain in the ass. And I went in with my Dremel, my rotary tool, and I chopped off the little traces going to this capacitor, uh, which is basically the VDD and ground. And, and I basically just wired it up correctly so that VDD goes to VDD, and ground goes to ground of this ATX Mega chip. And uh, yeah, that was basically the whole troubleshooting process. I wish I could have stepped you guys through it because I mean, I I didn't have much time that night when I was uh, troubleshooting it. So to set up and to, to record the whole video would have taken a lot more time than I intended, but it was a very interesting process. It was very cool how I could actually localize where the short was occurring by just looking at the ohms. You know, the, the, the lowest impedance was nearest to the short and just like I thought, it was probably a soldering job from here, but it wasn't. It was just a pinout reversal in the Eagle uh, uh, files. Now, let's see if I could actually program it. The, the whole idea of turning this on and testing it out is so that I could program it using 
my programming interface and uh, if this doesn't work though kill me now so I just spent a, a an hour or two trying to figure out how to program this thing I do recognize it in the Atmel Studio software though it's uh, it's quite a nice visual experience using Atmel Studio you get in there and then it's it's pretty simple to choose your product family and programming interface and it's uh, it seems very clean but I just couldn't figure out how to program it and make this LED blink but the good news is that I could look at this programmer from inside the software and I could read the serial number from the chip when it's powered on and it's really interesting because when I power it off sure enough I can't uh, recognize the chip so uh, I do correctly talk to this thing I just can't program it yet because uh, I'll figure it out sometime I'll make another video and uh, stay tuned because that will be some engineering I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I kind of talked about how I did the troubleshooting. I didn't really show you guys how I did it, but uh, hopefully in the future, when I have more problems with this quadcopter circuit, I'm going to show you guys in a video. I'm hopefully going to make another video about how I'm actually programming this chip because like I just mentioned, I had a hard time doing it. So when I have more time, I'm going to figure that out, get a video out, if you like my videos, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, uh, go to my website at www.tinmanelectronics.com. That's engineering.